All right, guys. And now I want to talk about something called restraint in chess. So uh, restraint is when we are not exactly trapping pieces, but we're getting close to it. So we already did a video on trapping. But the question is, how do we make sure the pieces can't come close to us while not exactly trapping them? So how do we take away their scope, in other words? How do we take away their eyes? That's what I want to talk about today. So let's take a look at this example, which was played between Mr. Richard Rapport and Michael Adams. Now, Richard is a very creative player from Hungary. And in this game, he goes for a crazy king's gambit, where even though he's down two pawns, as he will be very soon, he has a lot of space. He has the advanced h pawn, which is going to be a great attacking tool. He's going to have very active bishops, and he's going to start kicking back the black pieces and restraining them. Already the bishop and queen don't have much in the way of room and in the way of eyes, but I'm going to keep doing that to this knight too. So instead of just taking up all like a normal person, uh, Richard has another idea in mind, which is restraint, b5. We want to make sure the knight has no good moves, right? Already he has to go somewhere bad. For example, either b8, where he's got a long way till he can do anything ever again, or a5, where I can't wait to trap the knight by playing b4. Or, if he goes to b4, which is what happened in the game, we can go for a3, kick his knight away, and even though Mickey was probably planning to bring the knight back into the game, uh, Michael never actually got to do it, and we'll see why not. Okay, after bishop takes e3, we're covering some important squares, we're getting ready for bishop b4, h6 ideas, and attacking the dark squares, as well as queen b4, h6, queen g7. Um, because black has to cover that by castling, we are going to get ready uh, for the restraint. First, we're going to bring in the rook so he can help the pawns, so we can start pushing the pawns one day. And second, uh, we're getting ready for c5. And it's actually not b4. The usual move is b4. And I'm sure he would consider something like b4, which is also a part of restraint. But I don't think he liked his bishops coming in. I don't think Richard would want the bishops to just assault the rook and the queen side altogether. So that's why a better way of doing the same idea is actually queen c2 with c5 in mind. Because why do we need b4 if we can play c5 right away and take away that square? That's the only good square the knight has. If we take it away, he's in big trouble. After bishop g4, we get the dark squares with h6, going for g7. Uh, pawn to g6, no problem. Now we have the dark squares, and it looks like the black bishop can try to fight me for those dark squares, but it turns out he can't, because bishop d4 kicks the bishop away. If he tries to trade off the bishop, guess what? I have a double attack. Now the knight is restricted, so that should be a red arrow, and we have a double attack on g7 and g4, which are both falling in this position. So because he is in big trouble, he decided to run away. But after he runs away to e7, guess what? Uh, first of all, we may have ideas like rook h8, but he decided to go for something more modest. He decided to go for restraint with c5. And the point of c5 is that we take out the square from the knight, we take out the square from the bishop, and we make sure, bishop, you have no squares ever again. <laughs> okay, you're just permanently bad. And if you try to free yourself with something like c6, good luck getting out from d6. And the bishop is basically trapped already. And notice how the knight didn't really free himself after all. Now we can play something like b4, make sure he never comes back into the game. So in the game, uh, we actually had something along the lines of rook e8, where black is trying to move the pieces he does have, the two that are not restrained, like the rook, but it turns out the knight is not only restrained, but lacking defenses, right? There, there are no friends that can help him. All the friends are too far away, the bishop is too far. Are you going to play bishop to c8? That's a very sad move to have to play, right? And you're restraining the rook at the same time. If you play something like b6, guess what? You're losing the knight. And if you take on c6, same thing, you're losing the knight. So he doesn't have much of a choice. He has to give up the knight after c6, which means that uh, even though black gets a lot of play on the king side, at least white will win the knight and get a scary pawn on b7. So he got his pawn back, and now he wins a free knight. So it looks like everything's great for white, except, except for one problem. 
uh, his king is not doing so great. And he's going to have to pay the price for having all those pawns disappear. Right? That's not supposed to happen. And it's very hard to hold both this pin, this bishop on d4. Um, for example, king f2 takes, takes, and queen takes d4 is a problem. Right? Then this bishop is somewhat awkward, can be easily attacked. Uh, well, black pieces are actually fairly well coordinated. Black, uh, so the black pieces are coming into play with full effect. And he's got checkmate covered, so black managed to coordinate everything. So now uh, Richard had to defend, and thankfully he was able to find a way to save everything um, in order to make this game into a very nice draw. After bishop takes e2, bishop takes, rook takes, some crazy tactics go down. And the point of all that is that black gets close to the white king and he's able to do a perpetual check later on. So this part is not very important for us, even though it ended in a draw. Uh, the part that was important is when we were restric restricting the black bishop and restraining the black knight on a6, right? We made sure that they had no squares with moves like c5, which are monster moves, just taking out all the squares from black, okay? So that's a nice example, and I wanted to show you another one in the following game. So this was actually one of mine from World Open. Uh, it's a big tournament uh, a few years ago. And I was playing a young talent from America. And in this position, black already has some problems to solve. Black has a very strange bishop on g7, who doesn't look like he's ever coming out, even though he protects the king. And even though the knight looks like he's doing a good job, He's actually blocking the bishop, plus if he can't get to d4, he's a very awkward knight. So I just have to make sure he has no future on f5 or d4, right? I could play g4, but that would just be silly. So I don't want to restrain it this way. No, I want to take out the good squares he may have. So we restrain by taking out their good squares. Here, the good square is c3. That's a typical restrain move, saying, nope, you don't, you don't have anything there. Nope, you don't get that square. And already their knight runs into problems. Next move, we can go for g4, protect it, and then queen d2 trap the knight on h6. Notice how the knight has no good moves. Nope, 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 nothing. Okay, and since that knight has no good moves, he has to run away and create space for the knight. But even as he creates space, not a problem. Now we just get ready to both trap the knight in, uh, make sure he doesn't have the square, we get ready to bring in the rook to defend our pawn because we did create a weakness. We created a pseudo backwards pawn. It's sort of backwards. We don't want to move it up because then we get a backwards pawn on d4, right? So it's going to be a backwards pawn for some time, but that's okay because at least their pieces, like the bishop and knight, are restrained. The great thing is that even if they attack the pawn, we have moves like e6, which are very annoying to meet, and I'm going to take on f7, and here I'm coming for their weaknesses. So instead of all that, he decided to bring in the queen to try to double up and attack my pawn this way. But well, that's okay. We start attacking the weaknesses here. We have the idea of restraint with g4, and then guess what? We're winning e7. Okay, we're winning everything. And the point with e7 is not only do we win the pawn, we win the dark square. So knight f6, bishop takes f6, queen h6, mate on the menu. Okay. In order to defend against that, he had to play f6. And here I'm happy to go back and say, go take my pawn, take it. So I can restrain some more pieces, such as, uh, for example, queen e6 and knight g5, followed by queen takes e5. And you see how all the pieces have to go back. Already the queen is trapped. Poor queen is not having a good game here. After bishop f4, he doesn't want to take. He wants to cover the g5 square and restrain my knight and bishop. But it doesn't really help. After rook g8, we just take, pick up the pawn, open up our file, main corner file, and we have time to bring all the pieces. Make sure the weakness on d3 doesn't get captured, not because I care for the pawn, I care for the file a lot more than the pawn. So then after rook d1, he, he tries to attack the weakness, which makes some sense. And here is a critical moment. I had to restrain more pieces, because if I play something like c4, the bishop will come back to c8, get out, and f5. He will have the d4 square. I don't want to break the restraint on this knight. I want to keep the pawn here. I really didn't want to let him have knight d4 in the future. Um, I want to make sure he doesn't get the square. So in order to do that, I have to play g4. That's the logical move for white. Even though it looks scary, yes, but at least I have more pieces on my king side than he does. He will never checkmate me. <laughs> That's the good news. Even though, yes, it's a bit scary. 
to open a key like that. And after the knight has to run away, we have pawn zero. We can finally restrain the queen, and they don't have this square anymore. So we both restrain the bishop and restrain the knight at the same time. Look at this poor guy, no squares. Look at this poor guy, no squares. So their pieces are running out of squares. We make sure the restraint stays in place. We make sure it's reinforced. Keep that pawn there, make sure it's well protected. Sometimes even cover it up with the king in some cases, right? Or at least defend the king somewhat. He tries to break the restraint, he tries to break out. So we have to go for the dark squares. The second he opens up the bishop and gets him out, he's also weakened the dark squares because all the pawns are on the light squares. So after knight e5, I'm very happy to trade. Very happy to trade for, for the bishop, who's the king's best friend. And if he doesn't, if he runs away somewhere, then we have ideas like knight g5 in the future. Uh, we can start invading. And we have f7. This knight is actually very scary. That's why he decided to take. But after I take back, I have queen h6 coming up. I have queen g7. This is a nightmare for black. Um, black decides to take the free piece. He's up a piece after all, but I don't care for the piece. I care that my pieces are coordinated and their pieces are restrained. The bishop has no scope, the queen has no scope, nothing has scope. <laughs> he's so restrained he has to give away pieces at this point. He has to give them away. And after he gives them away, all right, let's start to take back our pieces. For example, uh, I could take right away, but why? Why not take this way? And then open up both files for the rooks. So let's take back the knight, but instead of taking right away, which would give him an amazing bishop, I restrain this guy first. I make sure that the bishop has to go away and after I'll pick up the knight in a better scenario. This would be a fantastic position for white because of the opposite color bishop attack, right? And already rook takes d5 and it looks like it's game over with queen g7. Instead, uh, he tries to go for rook e8, tries to muddy the waters, but it's not really going to help. I keep the pieces where they are, so they can take all the scope they can get. And then he's going to lose one piece, he decides it's going to be the bishop. After he loses the bishop, the knight has to go away. And once again, even here we gotta use restraint. Let's use restraint. I'll let you guys uh, think about this one. Okay, I'll take three seconds, you can pause the video. How would you restrain the drop knight? Okay, and if you said rookie two, you would be correct. We have to take out all of his squares, make sure he has nothing he can do. No a2, no c2, no d5, nothing. The only thing he can do is go back home. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He has to go back to a6. Now we have the dominant bishop against the ugly knight. See, we worked the whole game to get some scenario like this, where we can dominate their pieces, right? The, the rook uh, doesn't have much he can do. The queen doesn't have anything. We always have mating threats. And now let's keep the pressure on. Let's keep the back rank pressure on. Let's have the idea of rook e7 in some cases. It's really hard for black to defend, right? Black tries to gain up on the bishop, but it's not going to help. Now we have the threat of rook f6, or rook takes g6 in some cases, like queen takes c4, rook takes g6 would work. And so he decides to sack the exchange back. He decides to give me the rook for the bishop, because the bishop was so strong, but it's not really going to help. Let's bully the queen a little bit attacking mate. Let's buoy the f8 square and they, if they have to give up the rook that's okay uh, because checks will run out and after the checks run out we still have both queen takes, uh, queen f8, rook f8, all kinds of threats and their knight was sadly shut out of this game and that's why we won. Okay guys so always remember try to restrain your pieces and take out their